so up to lecture number 10 we have gone through details about the flat slab what are the requirement of flat slab and what will be the methodology of design of flat slab as per Indian standard code and we have gone through the procedure and steps involved in the design of flat slab based on direct method direct method recommended by Indian standard 456 now in lecture number 11 we will be practically design a flat slab with a given problem with the data so you are advised to listen this lecture carefully as well as before going through the lecture you must be having the copy of IS 456 as well as SP 16 so that you can easily understand all the concepts which we will be going to discuss in this lecture so design problem of flat slab as per direct design method recommended by Indian standard IS 456 so first of all let us go through the design problem now here we have to design the interior panel so first of all you must be remembering that when we were going through the design methodology there were different methodology for the design of interior panel as well as end panel or exterior panel so let us take a problem design the interior panel of a large single story long hall flat slab with a panel size is given 6 meter by 6 meter supported by column that means square size of column 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter height of the column is mentioned in the numerical that is 5 meter let us take live load as 2.5 kilo newton per meter square and the weight of the finishes including any waterproofing treatment that is 2.5 kilo newton per meter square so we have to adopt m25 grade of concrete and fe 415 steel bars for the design purpose and another thing is mentioned that the building for which we are going to design flat slab is located in a zone of mild environmental conditions so when you are talking about the mild environmental condition so then code is giving some recommendation that what should be the minimum clear cover based on the design criteria based on the location of the building and which will, uh, what will be the environmental conditions which are expected that building will be going through its life process so first of all step number one proportioning of flat slab in proportioning of flat slab let us go through the assumption that means first of all we will be deciding what should be the thickness of flat slab in the guideline of Indian standard 456 so let us assume span to depth ratio as we have discussed all the details in the previous lectures so you can refer the previous lectures wherever you find any doubt so span to effective depth ratio is given that is 0.8 into 40 32 so minimum effective depth because span length is 6000 millimeter so let us divide 6000 millimeter by 32 and we are getting 187.5 millimeter and as per recommendation of code restriction of code code is restricting the minimum depth or minimum thickness of the flat slab as 125 millimeter so we are getting 187.5 so which is greater than minimum depth or thickness recommended by is 456 for flat slab so we are safe here 
that mean we are following the guideline of the Indian Standard Code. So for mild environmental conditions, as per IS-456, let us adopt a clear cover of 20 mm, which can be decreased by 5 mm depending on the size of the bar, that means diameter of the bar. So here in this case, let us adopt clear cover 20 mm and assuming 20, uh, 12 mm dia HYSD bars. So we can assume that let us go through the 12 mm dia bars. We can go for 10 mm dia bars, no issue. So first of all, let us take clear cover that is 20 mm. Now the thickness or you can say overall depth required, it will be thickness of the slab plus cover and plus half of the dia of the bar. So we assume the overall depth or in other words, we can say thickness of the slab that is it comes out to be 213.5 millimeter. So we adopt overall depth as 215 so approximate let us approximate it so 215 millimeter we will be adopting the depth of the slab and adopted effective thickness comes out to be 189 millimeter so here you should clearly understand that whatever the codal guideline they are just suggestions or recommendations as, as per the codal advice, thickness required is 213, but for the practical purposes to make the execution work simplify, let us take 215 millimeter and effective depth comes out to be 189 millimeter. Second is, let us decide drop size. That means drop panel size, what should be the drop panel. So, at Per clause 31.2.2 of 456, code is recommending that you should provide a square panel of length not less than one third of the panel length. That is size of the drop should not be less than our panel length is 6000 millimeter. So divided by 3 that means minimum is 2000 millimeter. It is the minimum requirement. It should not be less than 2000 millimeter. Now drop panel size, let us continue. The depth of drop panel code is giving no guidelines. When you go through the codal guidelines in IS 456, there is no guideline regarding the depth of the panel. That means what should be the depth of the panel. However, in general practice, based on other codes which are internationally available in general the minimum depth of drop panel is taken as one fourth of the overall depth of the slab so here overall depth of the slab is 215 which we have adopted so let us take 25 percent that means one fourth of the 215 so it comes out to be 53.75 millimeter so let us again provide a drop panel of depth 60 millimeter and let us take the size 3000 millimeter by 3000 millimeter which is more than minimum recommended by the Indian standard code. So that means we have decided the thickness of the slab as well as drop panel size we have decided. So overall depth of drop panel will be 275 millimeter. You may remember that when we were talking about what is a drop panel, that means drop panel is basically the increased thickness of the slab at a particular region above the column. So overall depth of the drop panel comes out to be 275. We can go through this diagram. That means now you can see here this is basically the flat slab which we are going to design and the depth of less flat slab from this point to this point it is 215 and 
this is the drop which we have provided that means we have increased the thickness of the slab by 60 mm because depth is 60 mm so total depth will become 275 so overall depth of the drop panel is 275 here it is the column of 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter and the size of the drop along the length of the slab you can say it will be 3000 by 3000 millimeters so we have decided that we will be providing a drop of rectangular section rectangular area 3000 by 3000 and the drop panel depth is 60 mm so overall depth we got 275 millimeters now let us take width of the column state is equal to width of the middle strip because in this slab which we are going to design the panel is rectangular that means panel size is 6000 by 6000 so width of the column step as well as width of the middle step we are taking it is coming out to be 3000 millimeter you may remember in the methodology we were taking the width of the middle step that means half of the width of the middle step from the center line of the column it was 0.25 on 25 length of sp uh, that panel length along both side of the center line of the column so here width of the column step is equal to width of the middle step if you find any difficulty any doubt you can refer the previous lectures where all the methodology is explained in detail now step number two is the loading calculation so now we will be calculating various type of loads which will be coming on the flat slab so first of all self weight of the slab because we have decided the thickness of the slab 215 millimeter and since it is of rcc so unit weight we have taken 25 so self weight of the slab is coming out to be 5.375 kilo newton per meter square in case of middle strip why middle strip because in case of column strip thickness we have increased now dead load due to increased thickness of slab at panel drop now at panel drop another thickness is increased by 60 mm that means the depth of the drop is 60 mm so this will be the additional load which will be coming that means it will act as a dead load or self weight of the slab in case of column strip so we will be taking the maximum value we will be adding all these live load in the numerical problem is given 2.5 kN per meter square and finishes load is given 2.5 so adding all these loads total working load is coming out to be 11.875 kilo newton per meter square now i here uh, want to suggest to you all if you find any error in calculation you can rectify hopefully there will not be any error but if you find any error then you can rectify yourself so what we have calculated that means total working load is coming out to be 11.875 kN per meter square so then a design factor load after multiplying it with partial safety factor it comes out to be 17.8125 kN per meter square clear span ln that is from the face of one column to other column it comes out to be 5.5 meter so design load will be the ultimate load multiplied by span length and clear span so we are getting this value that is design load is coming out to be 587.82 kilonewton so up to this we are able to calculate 
what will be the design load coming on the slab so that we can calculate the design movements now step number three it will be bending moment calculation we have gone through in detail in the previous lectures that how we have to calculate the bending moment so total design movement m naught is given by formula w l n by 8 so after calculation you will get the value 404.13 kilo newton meter now the design moment m naught in a panel will be divided into negative and positive movements in the longitudinal direction as we have discussed in the previous lectures as per the clause 31.4.3.2 so let us distribute bending moment to negative and positive so in an interior span because in this problem we are going to design interior panel so interior span is there interior panel total negative design movement is multiplied by that is 0.65 m naught so total design negative movement is coming out to be 262.7 kilo newton meter and total positive design movement the rest of it that is 35 percent it is 141.43 kilo newton now these are the movements which we are distributing in the longitudinal direction now you know that this negative as well as positive movement will be again distributed and we can say it is redistribution of negative and positive movements so this negative and positive bending movement will be now redistributed in transverse direction that means along the width of the panel into column step and half of the middle step so column step let us calculate first of all what will be the positive bending moment as well as negative bending moment in column step so negative movement as per caudal provision it will be 75 percent of the total negative movement we have calculated so it comes out to be 197.02 kilo newton meter similarly in column step what will be the positive movement that will be 0.6 into total positive design movement that is 141.43 so it comes out to be 84.90 kilo newton meter so that means we here divided the total design movement into first of all total negative design movement then total positive design movement and now they have redistributed into column step as well as middle step so as per the methodology in the middle step negative movement will be 65.68 and the positive movement will be 56.53 kilo newton meter how it came you can go through the previous lecture carefully or you can refer is 456 carefully now step number four we have provided the depth of the slab now we will be checking the depth of slab or you can say thickness of slab first of all for bending so thickness of slab required a drop we have to check out that means how much thickness we have provided or how much is required to take care of the bending movement whether it's provided is okay or we have to change so for flexor or bending let us check the adopted depth taking into knowledge what will be the required depth for the bending we will be comparing here so formula for bending moment is given by 0.138 fck bd square after solving by putting all the values depth required is 138 mm but 
we have provided more than 138 mm so total depth provided at drop is 275 millimeter with an effective depth of 249 where the drop is provided as well as in the middle step we have provided overall depth as 215 and effective depth comes out to be 189 and the required depth was 138 and we have provided 189 so depth provided is okay because we have provided depth more than the depth required to take care of the bending moment so hence the depth provided is sufficient and the section we can say it is safe to take care flexures now step number five first of all we have checked the depth provided for bending now let us apply the check for shear flat slab as you know it don't contain any beams flat slab is the slab directly supported by columns and column is having very less area so possibility is that column can punch into the slab so first of all we have to check whether whatever the depth we have decided for the flat slab is able to resist the punching shear which are expected so as per is code code is suggesting we have to take the critical section at a distance d by 2 now d by 2 comes out to be 124.5 from the face of the column and for this check for the shear we have already discussed in, in details in lecture number 10 if you find any difficulty then you can go through the lecture number 10 now you see here this is the basically slab diagram now panel length we have taken l2 l2 that means because it is 6000 both sides now you can refer this will be the panel which we are going to design having 6000 by 6000 and this panel is supported on a column now we have to find out that whether the critical section or where the critical section will be located and how to apply the check for shear as per the is code guidelines now you can see here this shaded portion that means total load coming on this shaded portion will be responsible which I have to take by column now to modify uh, that mean we are enlarging the diagram here this is the panel basically and this red color is the column which is square column we have provided and as per the codal guideline critical section now critical section we have shown by this yellow dotted line and this total dimension will come out to be 749 column was 500 and d by 2 along left and right side so this will be also critical section will also be square section having dimension 749 millimeter so from this we are able to calculate what will be the perimeter of this critical section so perimeter b naught after calculation we get it comes out to be 2996 millimeter so this will be the very critical section that means at this critical section we have to check how much is the shear stress and whether that shear stress is enough to be taken care by the concrete in the section in other words we can say we have to check what is the shear stress coming at the critical section due to loading and what will be the maximum shear resisting capacity by the concrete so shear force at critical section now vu will be the ultimate shear force total load which can be calculated by total load on the panel this panel will be 6 by 6 meter minus load on 
this panel that means load will be total load on this panel divided by total load uh, minus total load on the critical section so that will be the shear force which may happen that there may be possibility of the punching shear can happen so vu we have calculated perimeter we have calculated now shear force at critical section we have calculated p vu that is equal to total load on panel area minus total load on the critical area so it comes out to be 631.25 kN and from this we are able to calculate what will be the nominal shear stress tau v tau v is given by formula v this is vu basically divided by v naught into d v naught is already we have calculated that is the perimeter of the critical section and d is the depth of the section so after calculation we are getting the value tau v that is equal to 0.846 now we have to check whether this shear stress which is coming due to loading is more than the shear resisting capacity of the concrete so shear strength of the concrete is given by formula ks tau c where ks is given by ks is equal to 0.5 plus beta c and where beta c is the ratio of the size of the column so here it is a square column so beta c will be coming out to be 1 and ks comes out to be 1.5 but again code is restricting that ks value should not be more than 1 so for calculation purpose we have taken ks is equal to 1 which is the maximum limit and tau c from the formula given in the is code we are able to calculate tau c is coming out to be 1.25 now it is very much clear when you compare these two values tau c is quite high compared to tau v so slab is safe in punching shear and there is no need to provide shear reinforcement again we have to check the shear stress at a distance d by 2 from the drop that is the face of the drop and we have calculated it is again it's found to be very safe and you can do your calculation and you can check it now very important step is step number six design of the reinforcement so now design of reinforcement we have to design the reinforcement for column step as well as middle step column step we have to decide what will be the reinforcement for negative moment as well as what will be the reinforcement requirement for positive moment now column step reinforcement for negative moment negative moment we have already calculated that MU is 197.02 kN meter affected depth we have provided 249 millimeter so here you will use SP 16 for simplicity we can calculate the reinforcement by the standard formulas also as given in the IS456 as well as now we are just using SP16 that means how SP16 is applicable we can use that we will be able to learn here so as per SP16 first of all we have to calculate MU by BD square which is coming out to 1.06 and from sp16 the from sp16 table you can easily find out what what will be the percentage of steel required so percentage of steel you can check with this value muibd square from table number 3 of sp16 so area required this will be the percentage of steel that means pt percentage is 0 0.310 so when we divide 0.310 by 100 and area that is the span length that means 3000 for the column step length 3000 and 249 is the thick, uh, depth of the step that means depth of the slab 
at that particular stick. So it comes out to be 2316 millimeter square. So we will be providing 12 mm dia bars at 140 mm center to center spacing. And how to get the center to center spacing that we have already discussed in the previous lectures. And we have to provide this reinforcement 12 mm dia bar at the spacing of 140 mm center to center at the top face of the slab over the column in the column step. And when we provide 12 mm dia bars at a spacing of 144, 140 millimeter, we are getting the area of steel which we have provided that is 2422 millimeter square which is greater than the required. So it is safe. Now we have to calculate the reinforcement for positive moment. Positive moment we have calculated already in the previous steps and depth there we adopted is 189. So let us again we provide 12 mm dia bar at 240 mm center to center spacing at the bottom of the slab in the column step and so area provided comes out to be 1412 millimeter square. Now similarly we have to do the calculation for the middle step. You can use very simple formula which we have already used in the previous type of beams as well as slabs you can refer IS456 and for middle step where negative movement is coming so reinforcement for negative movement where movement is 60 5.68 kilonewton meter and depth provided is 189. So after calculation, we have provided 10 millimeter dia bar at 210 millimeter center to center. Now it is negative movement, so we will providing it at top face of slab in the middle step. So area provided comes out to be 1120 millimeter square. And the reinforcement for positive movement, positive movement was 56.53 and depth again we have provided in the middle step depth is same throughout the step. In the column step because we have provided drops, so depth was changing near the column and in between the column. So let us similarly after going through all the calculations, we provide same type of 10 mm dia bar at 210 mm center to center at the bottom of slab in the middle step. Again area provided comes out to be 1120 millimeter square. Now another important thing of the design is reinforcement detailing. In earlier where we have gone through the reinforcement detail of continuous beam we have gone through all the details section wise now let us try to understand how the reinforcement detailing is to happen in case of flat slab. So this will be the basically panel which we have divided into column step. This will be the column step where columns are positioned then middle step again column step and similarly from other side this is the column step middle step and column step. Now we have calculated reinforcement. Some of the bars we have to provide it at the top of the slab. Some of the bars we have to provide it at the bottom of the slab. So bottom bars we are going to show by dotted lines and red color dotted lines. And for top bars we are showing solid line. Now listen carefully that if we are using here any red color or multiple type of color that is only for the understanding purpose. Whenever you are going to design a slab for practical consideration then all the details will be generally in single color. So these are the four columns which are 500 by 500 millimeter which are located and these are the center line of the columns. So these are the column step as I have already told you middle step and column step along longitudinal direction as well as transversal direction. 
no see here these are 12 mm dia bar at 140 mm center to center so we have just to understand that how the reinforcement will be looking that means how we can get the detailing of the reinforcement so dotted line mean bottom bars so these bars are provided in column strip so these are the column strip that mean in column strip we have provided 12 mm dia bar at a rate of 140 mm center to center at the top level top level mean that is the negative strip negative or you can say reinforcement for negative bending movement now these solid lines that mean top bars so here you have to keep in uh, for clarification there is one correction bottom bars are not dotted basically these are the top bars so you have to be careful now solid lines now these bars which we have shown that is 12 mm dia at 240 mm center to center in column strip and again in the column strip so these things you have to keep uh, you can make one correction here now this is basically the middle strip in the middle strip we are showing these are the basically you have to understand there is one correction that dotted will be the top bars and bottom bars will be shown solid so this correction we have to keep in mind now these bars we have provided that is 10 mm dia 210 mm center to center now these bars are in the middle strip again 10 mm dia bar at 210 these are basically the bottom bars here legend we have uh, need to be corrected so these are the solid bars are the basically bottom bars positive movement which we have provided so 10 mm dia 210 now these bars 10 mm dia 210 they are in the middle strip so middle strip in any direction we have provided so this will be the way how to show the reinforcement detailing now you one task is for all of you you have to draw the reinforcement detail by taking section first section you have to take through column strip another section you have to take through middle strip thank you